Now, oil prices is hovering around uh, between 50 to $60 um, dollars in the short to medium term. What is your outlook? Um, our outlook for oil prices is that prices would be around, would trade between 60 to $70 dollars per barrel. Even if they, even if OPEC agrees to agrees to a production cut, it is not. We are not going to see an immediate jump jump in the prices of oil. For for example, Russia has opined that it's going to take them at least three to four months to implement a full production cut. Likewise, so there's always this time lag between a policy and the response. So that's what's going to happen. But pr nonetheless, market will begin to factor in this decision, and prices will be creeping up a bit. Okay. Now, another issue on your burning economic, um, or rather, item on your burning economic issue is that um, NNPC <coughs> has awarded contract for protection of Trans Focado's pipeline. How welcoming is this news, and uh, what will this mean for Nigerian oil production and exports? Okay, the NMPC pieces are holding um, protection for transfer Gado's pipeline is a good news for the Nigerian economy because when when you look at the history of pipeline sabotages in Nigeria vandalization. Yeah, va vandalization in Nigeria right it's the the transfer Gado's pipeline is always the main target and the pipeline transports about 250,000 barrels per day if you when you convert that it sums so at the current market that's about 500 million dollars it's a it's a big thing for Nigeria, so it's a, it's a positive for the government and government revenue earnings. And we, when we look at the major downer you have there, uh, you say the retail diesel price remains flat at 255 at naira nine. per liter, and um, you are saying it's negative for logistics and distribution costs. Could you express on that? Yes, you. Yes, when you look at the um, transport system in Nigeria, it's mostly it's mostly dominated by road. You can, and evidence is this: um, the gridlock on the Eco Bridge and in, across Lagos, the Eco Bridge. You would see them. So it tells you that the um, road network is the main is the main source of transport of materials across the country. And when prices when prices um, diesel is a major input for this for the transport sector, and when prices are a bit uh, sticky downwards. It shows. It tells you that price, um, the overall, the overall cost is going to be high, and that's probably going to filter into higher logistic cost and filter into infl headline inflation, which we are projecting that would it would increase marginally to about 12.27. Okay. So. And then one of the goodies is that um, on grid on grid power output is up to 4,068 megawatts per hour. What is responsible for this this time? Yes, um, if you look at the trend in on grid on grid power output, we've seen that the gas constraint has gas constraint has been the major drag for the for the power output. But what we've seen recently is the the, the amount of const constrained energy from gas has reduced. So on grid power output has stayed above 4,000 megawatts. But the main question is, is 4,000 megawatts. Should Nigeria be producing 4,000 megawatts per hour, which is plainly no. Okay, but then what we have seen, at least, um, is also welcoming now. How welcoming. much impact will this have on FFCGs going into uh, the festive season? Well, you talked about the transportation that would probably um, affect the inflation numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, what about this, the power situation? So, a stable power supply is going to is going to translate to reduced and um, expense on on backup energy like generators or something and that's going to that's going to um, improve the profitability of FMG, FMCG sector but we should also know that the FMCG sector is a basket case there's a lot of constraint in the sector in the sector for instance we have um, low weak demand because of low de um, disposable income and we have the logistic cost, like I just said, logistic cost evident by the APAPA grid lock. You can see, we can always see that that's, that's, um, costing, that's costing this um, players in this industry a huge sum of, sum of money. And, and another, thing, another thing that we should look at is this, this, um, this cost is even, 
is outweighing the federal government imperative to improve improve activities for the sector is for for example the backward integration backward induction um, sorry integration program which which um these FMGGs players are they are encouraged to purchase directly from the local producers although that is bringing prices down but the gridlock is is another thing to and looking at your domestic commodities price uh, movement, we see rice, beans, and cement going up. What are driving? What are the factors driving uh, the prices of these commodities? Particularly at this time, we know everybody is preparing for the festive season. Yeah. So, so, just like you said, the, it's, a, it's the, the main driver of of the increase in price of rice and beans now is the festivity incre increased demand ahead of the festive season then when we talk about when we move to the cement the cement cement price has increased by 1.6 percent that's 15 naira to 2600 per, per bag why maybe because people who would want to furnish their homes or build their house finish up their houses because they want to travel for christmas or perhaps why? yeah perhaps that's the reason but what is most likely to be the reason is we we are now at the end of the rainy season. We are now at the end of the rainy season, so construction construction has resumed. So there has been an increase in demand for cement. And what is more, another thing that is more important is the outlook for cement prices. And we think cement prices will continue to increase in the near term because construction is going to intensify ahead of the general elections as well. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Mukhtar. Oh, Mukhtar Jibo is one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company. Mm -hmm.